Good evening, everybody. This is a new human experience podcast. And today is September the 24th, 2020. The topic for this evening is the wisdom of beliefs. So this whole September, I've been talking about um, what beliefs are and how we can work with beliefs, whether we, um, how to change beliefs. And, and, and so this is the last episode that we're going to devote on exploring beliefs. So I saved the best for last, of course. Now we have uh, talked a little bit about you know all the things about beliefs and how how important beliefs are, and whether you, for example, whether you love the life that you're living now or not, it's because it's all because of your beliefs. Because if you, for example, um, why why are beliefs so important? It's because for you to have a reaction to an experience, something like, you know, living life, just living life for you to have an experience or reaction to an experience. You must have a belief to support how how you react, like to support your reaction to that experience. That's why what we believe in is so powerful because what we believe in literally controls how we, um, how we have it, whether we we love something or we don't. So then, why is why are beliefs so powerful? What is the purpose of having beliefs, or more importantly, what is the purpose of having experiences? Because here um, we here to live life mainly is to experience. So why? Why is it so important that we, we have beliefs? Why is our belief so important? Why are experiences so important? Because we, like, we could have just come here and um, the design could be that we can just come here and just, you know, things happen and we don't experience anything. We don't take on any beliefs at all. Like, we could have played like that, but that's not what the um, the design of this playground called Earth is like. So we believe, um, beliefs, I should say, beliefs and experiences are really part of a feedback loop. If So for example, if I take on this set of beliefs that's called A, then... Um, for a set of beliefs that's that's A, then you will have a range of experiences. So if A, then B. So it's 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 not there's usually not just one specific experience because each one is our our mind works slightly differently, our family background is slightly differently. So even though it's the same beliefs, however, it's usually a range of experiences that we can have. So if you, if you like what you've experienced, then we can hold on to the beliefs that um, shaped that experience. And if you don't like what you experience, then we can change and swap the beliefs out so and then see how we can change our experiences and really tweak our experience through changing our beliefs that's why beliefs what we believe becomes our experience because it is in this background in this uh, playground in this playground called earth that's how the um the 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 play is is that beliefs um our beliefs shapes our experiences and so that we can tweak our experiences through changing our beliefs. So this is what we, we are here to learn. And, and the reason why we are, he, this is the way it is, because it's from this experience that we can start to know ourselves because we... when we recognize that we can create experiences, that we can actually change 
and use our thought processes and what we believe in to start to create um, experiences and, and, and make things um, happen the way they are, it actually starts to wake ourselves up to the, the creator within us. And then from, we start from beliefs. So we start from beliefs and through experiences, we move into knowing who we are. And, and I've already mentioned, each one of us is slightly different um, because of our family background and also because our soul signature is a little bit different. No two soul signature is exactly the same. So how we, um, how we respond to an experience is as much a a product of our beliefs as it is a product of our soul signature as well. For some people, for some souls, certain experiences um, would be less impactful than others. Whereas for some souls, their, their soul signature is that they have a very sensitive nature. So let's say if I talk in a certain tone, some people may, like, let's say I'm teaching a class um, and their students, let's say there are, you know, 20 students. So 10 of those students may hear what I say and really enjoy it and they, they take it in. Whereas the, the other 10 could have uh, experiences like, oh, how come she's talking so loud? This is really, I, I, I can't take this, 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 this loud and repetitive um, lecture. So, and they, they would react to it and they don't like it. Um, it's the same, I, I'm speaking the words. However, the same words does not land on all people exactly the same way. And that's really how our soul signature and also our um, family background, how, what kind of beliefs that we have, our soul have decided to take on and the beliefs that we decide not to take on. So all of those things really shapes how we experience and when we start to play with this beliefs experience, we tweak our beliefs so that we can, we can shift our experiences. It also is a way for us to move from um, thinking that we are this body and that that's all there is. It starts to move us into knowing more of ourselves, start to wake ourselves up into the, the creator nature. And that's a progression of um, from believing through experience, we move into knowing. And then there is the next step as well, is we start to awaken to, to know the, the more energetic and also um, cosmic parts of ourselves. And when we start to move from the knowing, we start to get into being. So then we start to really get to know who we are, um, regardless of what our beliefs may be, because our beliefs can come and go. Because as we start to learn through experiences, we know that there are beliefs that we can just drop. And it's so easy for us to, to shift out of. And then there are some beliefs that are more um, that resonates with our soul at a much deeper level. So those are the, the things that we would, um, it's, it's like the, we, we play this so that we can find our own boundaries so that we can get to know our own being. And, and if you can imagine that we do this um, in a lifetime, let's say 60 or 100 years, or maybe 150 years, depending on how, how long people are starting to live. We're starting to live longer and longer. So we actually have a longer lifetime to learn all this. 
And also, we don't just have one lifetimes. Our soul can have many, many lifetimes. So with all these experience of lifetimes and lifetimes, and creating, practicing how to create and experiencing and all this, it's how we actually move from creating experiences into getting to know ourselves, getting to know our soul signature and getting to know who we are being as well. So moving from belief to knowing and to being. And that is why beliefs, experiences, it's all such um, an important, why, why is that the um, kind of, why is that something that is, made into part of the playground because this is how the, this playground and many other playgrounds is for us to start to learn, to get to know who we are and start to get back to who we are being, which is source. We are aspects of source. So when we actually get into being, the state of being that then we can get to um, get to the point where we have no room for doubt anymore. And that's when we can just say and even just think and say to the mountain, move and the mountain will move because the mountain exists. This playground exists to support us into moving towards that beingness to start to be who we are. And so we are still in the process of that, in the process of getting from just playing around with beliefs and then getting into knowing who we are and also getting to the point where we are so certain of who we are as part of source that we can just think something and it would start to manifest and create immediately so that is our that is really our um, i should say that's really the path of beliefs or the wisdom of beliefs is that that's the process that we are learning that is why it is so important and um let's see what else um <laughs> and uh, I, I know that right now it's it, you know, like getting to the point where well, we can just say move and the mountain will move for us. It seems so far-fetched. It's, it's not because um, we, are, we, are, we are so, um, I would say that, it's not that we are so far away from it. It's just because I um, just want to mention a little bit here because we we just coming out of the uh, Luciferian experiment, which is we agreed to have an ex a very colorful experience of light and dark. We also signed up for the experience of being so completely separated from our creator source being and to really completely forget who we are and have so many things uh, like, like things like the, um, the inverted matrix, we have uh, ego being put in, AI being put in and all of that. We agreed to have this, this experience because we are just coming out of that experience and we are just grabbing our um, mind and starting to let go of all the, I would say, the tough, the tough environment that we have been experiencing in the last 10,000 years. In the last 10,000 years, um, we were not allowed to really have the, the, the natural experience of um, thinking something and then being able to create it and just experience it. We actually have a, um, a, an extra layer where someone else took over our mind. They, they actually um, taught us that, they taught us about fear. So a lot of fear 
is injected into it so that we don't trust ourselves. And the whole point of the ego is really to um, accentuate the, the experience of being separated, being separated from our source being and also being separated from one another. And we don't even recognize that everyone out there is also a part of me. And so we, we are just coming out of that experience and we are starting to get back into really starting to experience being able to create and have the, the environment to have earth support our creation and have all the supportive energy. That's why now more so than ever, when you really clean up your own thinking and not try to have too many, um, I would say, hmm, cross purpose thinking, you actually would be able to create and manifest whatever it is that you have in your mind so much easier. And you would actually start to get back into that that um, pattern of aligning your beliefs and creating, experiencing it, and then tweaking it and starting to, to really get to that. So uh, that's why this, this whole month I've been helping all of you to really learn about how to take control and to start to uh, pivot and start to let go of beliefs that does not support you anymore. And, and so it's, it's, um, it's simple, not to say that it is easy. It's not, it's not as easy as pie. Um, unfortunately, you still have to do some work. However, it's, it's, it's simple. You just have to let go of the emotional content. Just get back to being, um, of really embracing the, the experience. Don't fight the experience. Don't fight where you are. Just, just be grateful for the experience and let go of any emotional content. And when you can let go of the emotional content, the, the anger or the shame or um, all those, those uh, fear-based emotions that you have around the beliefs, when you can get to the point where you actually um, get it, that the, the belief is really there to support you to have experience. And when you don't fight, when you don't fight the experience, when you don't, it's, it's like fighting the experience is, it's, um, you're actually chopping off the feedback loop. The feedback loop is there so that you will know when you have this set of beliefs, this is the outcome. So instead of judging the outcome is to just say, oh, thank you for letting me know that there is some part of my beliefs is not supporting me to have the experience that I have in mind. So let me tweak it to, and, and to get back to being playful at and really play the idea of play because earth is a playground all of this and when we can get to the point of not judging our experience and get back to experiencing this playground and being able to play and um, flow with the beliefs and not having to, to say, okay, my father, who, whom I love dearly, died. That's why whatever he says, I am going to cling on to because I want to cling on to my memory of him. So when we can let go of these kind of um, beliefs or these kind of emotions that have us cling on to beliefs that may not be... Um, helping us to create exactly the experience that we want to have. When we can start to let go of experience, uh, uh, sorry, let go of the, the beliefs to just um, thank you for the experience. The experience is simply a feedback. So then we can start to 
look at our beliefs. So what, which beliefs that we have in like that, that we can think of that will, that may support us to create certain experiences. And when we, when we have no judgment as to what the experience is, and we really just look at the experience as being the feedback and be able to look at the, um, our beliefs and all the intention that went into creating that experience, then we can start to tweak our beliefs and also shift our experience. And the more we, we um, work with this feedback loop, the more we can swap out and the better we get at swapping out the beliefs that does not support us. And it's, it will get easier for us to let go of beliefs because there's no more attachment to the beliefs. It's no longer my dying father's wish or my lovely mother's wish or whatever it may be that, that have you being stuck in a certain beliefs and thinking that you have to believe that and really see what beliefs and experiences are, what their relationship is. It's simply a feedback loop. And you can really um, shift any of your experience just by being able to, to let go of beliefs in a much more playful manner. And it's no longer a, a um, life or death situation. It is just a belief. If this belief is not supporting me to have the experience that I want, then let's swap it out. Let's try something else. And if the, the, the so this, this kind of playing and experimenting is really how we can start to get back into the creator seat and being the creator of our own experiences. So then you are the creator of your own experiences. So when you really have that, when you really have that um, feedback, when you really start to experience that, then what beliefs can you incorporate into your creation process, into your intention, so that you can love your experiences? So that's something that I would encourage you to start explore on really how this is going to be. And of course, I would also want to, I know I, I kind of um, mentioned this um, the first week. So I just want to also end with this as well, is to start to talk a little bit about um, the more foundation fifth dimension beliefs. I'm not uh, expecting that all of you would be able to just, you know, incorporate all of these foundation fifth dimensional beliefs into your life right here and right now. And if you are called to do that, then bravo. However, I just want to start to um, expose you to it and, and start to um, uh, kind of let you experiment with how you can start to incorporate these beliefs bit by bit at your own pace. So the first thing that I want to, uh, the first one I want to talk about is that the fifth dimensional beliefs, the core beliefs is that really we are more than our body. I think um, this, this is kind of, I should say the more easy ones because we, the, at, at the very least, the people who are on this call, who are listening to, to this would be somebody who, who would have some experience or at least if not a knowing, at least have some belief that we are more than our body. And to be more precise, we actually have a body. We have an entity or another name for entity is our earth soul. And then we have our soul, which is actually our cosmic soul, the, the part of us that um, don't, 
that is not confined to earth. And then we also have a mind. So this, so we, we uh, at the very least, we have four parts, body, earth soul, cosmic soul, and we have a mind. And this is just, um, so this is just a belief. So and there is no proof. I cannot prove to you at the moment that we have uh, these four parts, I cannot, um, I cannot show you where the, your mind is. I can only allude to where your mind is. I cannot actually show you where your entity is. I can only suggest that when you tune in to a certain place in your body, that you are actually tuning in to uh, the energy that is more of your entity and also with with your soul as well when for example when you are really focusing on your heart you are actually touching more on your cosmic soul whereas when you are um, relying when you are tapping into your gut reaction you are more really tapping into your earth soul that's where your earth soul resides is around your gut area so these uh, things it's 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 a belief for now and at some point it will get to be a knowing and at some point it will become your being is that we are all each just every one of us is really made up of other parts the the body is um, part of Gaia part of earth part of Mother Earth, this playground. And that's how actually how we can experience, how we can have experience is through our bodies, through the senses. So we have all these different parts of us. And that's why we are more than just our body. So that's one of the core fifth dimension beliefs and then the the next one is that we are all aspects of one so the idea of oneness i already mentioned in the previous one is that we have we have body we have entity we have soul we have mind so those are just just to name a few so we are however all of this all the body entity soul and mind are actually all part of one and also that um, even though I may have a different body from the the people from each and every one of you that's listening to this podcast now and also afterwards however we are all still part of one because there is only one there is only the infinite creator consciousness and everything within it we are all within the creator we are that's why we are all one this aspect of oneness is a core belief in fifth dimension right now i cannot scientifically well okay <laughs> i am not a, a, a science buff so i don't know how to i don't know what scientific method that I can can show to you and prove to you that there is only one. However, I'm quite sure that science will get there one day, if not already. We all just have to um, kind of um, get ready for that is, is that we are all one. So this oneness, this concept of oneness is really how um, it's also another aspect of fifth dimension core beliefs. And then the next one is there is only this moment. Oh, I know um, this may be not as, not as easy for, for everyone to grasp. However, there is only this moment we create we can only create from this moment and this moment once has passed once i've once these words came come out of my mouth 
it's it's the next moment already and i and every time when i start to um think of something that is already in the past i'm I, like i cannot go back i can only remember it i can only sample the energetic part of that of the, that moment that is in the past however i can never experience that moment again in exactly the same way so in that way there is just this moment and there is only this moment and everything is created in this moment and when we start to get back to being in this moment with all of our being with our mind body and all parts of our soul then we can actually start to tap into the creator part of ourselves that's why being present is um it's a practice it is a it is very profound it can actually expand our awareness when we can be with ourselves with all of our thoughts and start to align all parts of ourselves to be in this moment it actually start to supercharge our creator ability to not be distracted not to distract ourselves in this moment and then one more that I want to throw in is that we are here to play we've always been here to play <laughs> however it's this is more important in the fifth dimension belief is core belief is that we are here to play we are here to experience our creation and there is no such thing as a right creation or a wrong creation there is no judgment or at the very least our soul does not judge us our soul only works with us to guide us into the best way for us to get to know who we are and start to be who we are however there is only play and um when we can really grasp this belief this this belief and start to let go of judgment start to let go of right wrong black and white and really start to to embrace the idea of play and start to embrace the idea of creation that we are creators so what do we want to create and it and whenever we create something is to simply experience it and not and not let the the judgment comes in and to just experience it fully and then if an experience resonate with us then we'll just go ahead and and create some more and if we don't resonate with this experience then we can tweak our creation process by changing our mindset changing our beliefs swapping in something and to just play with what works what can give me the experience that i would like to have and embrace this play and really embrace the idea that we are not here to suffer we really are not we are here to play we are here to experience who we are which is joy light love and when we can truly embrace all of that then we can really start to feel that joy light love and let go of any um beliefs that have us think and experience life in any other way and that's all i have for 